Hey, welcome back. Let's continue our talk about the three steps necessary um, if you want to learn any programming language or your first programming language. It's easy if you structure it into three steps. And we already talked about the first step, managing data. Um, and I've got an on-demand class. If you're interested, it's free to join. Uh, and I'll tell you more about it at the end of this episode. But um, the second step is to learn how to control data, uh, control the flow in your program. You, you, we talked about managing data in the first step. Now we need to control the flow, um, taking into account the current state of the data, the current values that are being stored. If you um, think about my, my primary example, my real life example of an ATM um, a machine, a cash machine um, spilling out money, um, uh, from your bank account, usually uh, you have to enter the PIN code. Uh, you have to identify uh, your bank account that you want to uh, you know, withdraw money from and you have to sort of authorize that you're allowed to do that, usually with a PIN code, like a four-digit four number there. Um, and if you think about it, that the condition to be able to withdraw the money is actually the correct PIN code. Um, and there's another condition uh, that you have enough money uh, left in your account, of course. Um, but let's, let's talk about the PIN code first. So if you enter the PIN code correctly, then you are able to withdraw the money. If you didn't enter the PIN code correctly, then, well, maybe you can enter it again. But the, the important thing is that that's a different step here that's being executed. Um, I, I did compare um, a computer program with a cooking recipe. Uh, cooking recipe is um, a sequence of steps that you need to follow in order. But different than a cooking recipe, a computer program, you can branch off. You can say, well, I don't want to execute the next step unless a certain condition is met. I don't want to um, withdraw the money and spit out the cash unless the PIN code is actually correct. If it's if it's correct, then it's fine to, to uh, spit out the money, of course. If it's not correct, then we have to branch off and do something else. And that's what I mean by controlling the flow through your program. You want to be able to react on the different kinds of input that's coming in into your program stored in the variables. And depending on some condition, you want to determine what's the next step. And these conditions can only have true outcomes, uh, two possible outcomes, either true or false. There's no in-between. And um, there's an, a statement to do that. Uh, and it reads like the English language. If a certain condition is met, then do one thing. Otherwise, do a different thing. And that's why modern programming languages are really not that hard to, to understand once you sort of figure out that you, well, you read them from left to right and from top, uh, from bottom, yeah, from top to bottom. <laughs> Got confused there for a second. Uh, from top to bottom, uh, left to right, just like English. There's nothing to be afraid of. And in my free on-demand on class, the three steps to learn any programming language, I show you actual code of an if statement and how easy it is to sort of decipher. There's nothing to be afraid of. Okay, so that's your second step of the uh, three steps to learn any programming language. If you want to enroll in the free class, then just listen.